Hello again everyone, it's time for the top table and the final round of another week's locals. Uh, this is Steve Dolman here, I'm playing some YRP with a twist. Uh, this is like you know YRP, a deck that's kind of close to my heart just because it looks really really quirky and uh, I think it enables you to play some very unusual cards that you basically can't fit into decks normally, but uh, they become very powerful in the presence of like you know. So hopefully we'll see what I mean, and I know I'm against Firewater FF9. I know because that's my deck. Uh, would you like to do uh, high roll three dice or something? Yeah. High, high roll, roll three, three dice. dice. Now I've got to try and figure out how to count. So that's a one, and that's a six, and that's a six. Unlucky 13. You're going to beat me now. No, I'm not. No, you're not. Uh, I'll go first. This is the first toss I've won all day, so naturally the hand is terrible. Haha. Fine, I hear you're playing, a, in your own words, a god tier card. I got to add at the end of round three. I heard light unit, <laughs> light unit as a god tier card. Light unit as a god tier card in the presence of a couple of interactions. I think that if uh, three or four of the best combo pieces for light unit didn't exist, no one would give it a second look. But anything called unit helps enable pain. Anything called unit helps enable Velfer, and those are very powerful on their own. Yeah. But you can do some even stranger things just because of what light unit does. So ho hopefully this will turn into one of those games. Right now it doesn't look like it. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll I'll go first. This looks even worse, but uh, discard Diabolos and discard Fina for Echo. Echo, check and draw. Don't want you. You look better, and I'll just pass there. Okay. I was going to say, do you want to tick that down? I've like actively not been looking at the screen. Yeah, our, uh, our recording rig is. Uh, if you leave this, the, the laptop screen open, it looks a little bit uh, sneaky for that side of the table. To play Scholar? Granny for Scholar. Okay, that definitely makes it look like uh, there's another one maybe in your hand. An educated guess, you're going to play. Uh, on you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, poo poo, and one for pain. I'll search a Reeker and play it at the expense of an Echo. This is post ban, of course. I was actually playing a lot of post ban YRP uh, anyway because, as hopefully everyone will know now, Mil Riku is a horrible card and is well deservedly now on the ban list. I think it's a much more deserving ban than Dadaluma. Dadaluma felt like a little bit of a dinosaur, a little bit slow. Like, it was good at beating down the random decks in Swiss, but it wasn't really seeing anywhere near as much actual play in the games on top tables when it got banned. It was basically a ban for fun reasons. It just yeah, it, was like Thomas yeah. like Gesper, it just wasn't too engaging to play. Yeah, it's, like a, it's a quality of life change. Like there were just some decks that just I, couldn't I, respond to. I that. believe so anyway. I, I choose to believe so, and I'm going to pass that. Yeah. Um, I like to think it happens a lot more than people give games credit for. Yeah, um, I, I do think that a lot of uh, adjudicating bodies will will realize what makes a bad card or what makes an unfun card and what people are really unhappy about. So we've got a partial mulligan. Could be a whole mulligan. Yeah, it's just three. Three, okay. Sounds good. I think the Artemisian's an effect that would do well to be seen other places. I would love to see Artemisian in five or something like that. Granny. So uh, you discarded Granny for the Scholar, Viking for Artemisian. You've not discarded oh, for Granny yet. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, it's all right. Worst things have happened. At least we caught it. So yeah, you, you've managed to land on a reasonable number of FF9 characters already. Oh, we, we hit the mythical seven last round. Oh, and then I, VV I, I, starts I, I, doing these 10,000 stuff. I didn't get to play a VV into it, but I, I was just looking at my opponent was thinking on his turn and I'm just sitting there going, yes, I will try. We've done it, we've done it. Seven. V VV counting himself as well is very strong. Yeah. It does mean that if VV is your seventh, it's relatively easy to just ping VV and then reduce the number in response. Yeah. But it doesn't happen too much. Yeah, not enough to be sad about. Uh, I'll pass there. Sounds awesome. Oh dear. Uh, let's go to combat. Yep. Oh. Ginger. I think I'm just going to pass there. Okay. And I'll show the camera why. Oh, I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> just live streamed chat, help me. Twitch subscribers, <laughs> message in what you should do. Looks good. Is that going to lead to one five or six in hand though? That is the question. Surely it wouldn't be six. It is six. Uh, 
Okay, yeah, that makes much sense. On you go. Oh, that mm. Okay. No. <laughs> no. Wow, this got so bad. I wish I'd done something very different on the previous turn there. F's and butts, eh? Combat. Hmm. I want to see no with an extra card. So I'll block. Oh, sorry. Player block. One That's right. That's right. I need to play I, I, I'm, I'm, to play not, I'm not going to cast a buff on you, don't worry. Alright, this feels lame, but hopefully it'll draw me into something a little bit more exciting. It won't. Discard a Leviathan for a Moogle. You're going to draw two Draw two, Yuna. discard one. Discard that Light Yuna. I will discard that Riku, thank you very much. Oh, and then we're going to go Riku and Riku. Because that's what Did I you draw two? <laughs> last turn, three Riku in, in the space of like no time at all. That that pain is like, let me bring my girl and all her clones. Uh, I'll stick down to Dane and have a look at what you've got. Oh, planned. you're going to see a very familiar picture, actually. So we've got this. So long as it's not three Rikus, that's in fine. This. Oh my goodness. Uh, I think I probably screw you more by taking the Black Mage. So uh, let's let's rip the Black Mage. Nothing changes if I take a Steiner. All that happens is that the chance of you somehow playing those three Steiners goes way, way down. Cloud of Darkness is more concerning, but off of this field, I don't see you doing it this turn. So I'd rather take the Fire CP. More importantly, it's Fire Backup CP. And how badly do I want to do something else as well? Nothing. No, I'll pass there. This is the first game. I'm actually putting quite a low number of backups in this deck. Uh, there's only 15 in the list because once you have a certain combo piece on the field, I don't want to give too much away, but uh, if you're interested, I can post a, a deck list in the description. And uh, yeah, once you find these certain pieces, you just get backups. They're magnetically drawn to you. I think two of the Swiss games today, I've gone in one turn from two backups to five without spending my whole hand. And uh, yeah, those games Whoa. went kind of all right. Crazy. Oh my goodness, it's Eyeliner Steiner. Best Steiner. It's amazing what one card being printed can do to an otherwise defunct archetype. One CP VV is phenomenally strong. Best VV. Best art. Be be best VV, yeah. Yeah, yeah I really like it actually. It's, uh, it's quite detailed for a mano, not quite so minimalist. Ico. Right. It feels weird that this Ico does nothing with summons. Yeah, yeah, but when it's kind of Ico's whole it's like plot jam. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy to call it there. I like hearing five that. Five cards in hand. I'm not too much of a fan of any of these, but uh, you've got tons in hand, so Zidane is tiny. Yes. Hmm. Poo poo and one for Brani. For Viking? Got to be, yeah. yeah. I was going to add one of the Chocobo that gives haste to this deck last minute <laughs> just because Brani can search it out. And I am playing Gladiator to return sometimes standard units. And I thought that one of them would actually make a noticeable difference. But I couldn't find any. Like, I'd already left the house, couldn't find any. Feels bad to be me. Yeah, I got very upset actually. I remember sitting and I was trying to think, funnily enough, of the exact same thing because we even had a conversation before this about what standard units I want to play. But I remembered, ironically, the last time I was on stream, it was when you were playing the. It was when you were testing that Gladiator deck out when you built it around right, Gladiator. Yeah. And that came to mind and I was like, gets Gladiator. And I'm like, Gladiator brings back a two drop, right? And I was like, Horum, <laughs> Vivi, that's insane. I now understand why that isn't a thing. Um, yeah, a little bit stricter than that. Yeah, that's, Tiny that's bit a shame. Let's go Viking and Diabolos into Layla. Oh. I would like a wide field he, to he, he ho hopefully do some big damage soon. And I'm just going to pass there. It's too hard to get through Steiner, and I don't want to have to trade Pain and something else just to get through this fairly disposable Steiner. So... Uh, if I wait long enough, then I'll get off a decent Diabolos turn, or something maybe even better. What I think that uh, is 
unfairly distributed towards water wind is how cheaply they generate a really big field. Yeah. And like Layla Viking, even playing Layla Viking on turn one, you're paying like one CP for two different forwards, but one of those forwards is going to draw you two cards over the course of the game. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that that is potentially problematic. Like there, it's it, it's not that they're going to win combats, but it's the threat of your opponent is going to bleed out any time you pull off a board wipe unless they start expending actual resources to get rid of something that didn't really cost anything at all. Yeah, absolutely. And when your opponent knows your hand's full of like expensive threats, they don't want to be given Yeah, it's like extra cheap, CP. cheap bodies backed up by good summons has yeah. been kind of a... My last round, I had the, my opponent knew I had the 7 cost Phoenix in hand, and I just played Layla into his shoulder, like looked him straight in the eye and did it. It's like, <laughs> I know you're not, an, you're not willing to do this. <laughs> That's a lot of cards in hand. It is. I should do things with them. The difficulty is, now I know you've got Ico in hand, and I know you would very much like to play Ico, but I think it could be difficult for you to play Ico and feel comfortable with how, how, how many forwards there are on board. Like, right now they're all just 3,000 at most. Three, uh, kill of Viking. What do we have here? Interesting. Another look for everyone at home. I want to push, push the boundary a bit. We'll play her anyway. Seems cool. Yeah, like screw, uh, screw the system. I think that if you can survive whatever onslaught I may or may not have planned, then things will really look up for you. Forwards, that's not okay. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, so it's only Steiner who searches for characters, which is kind of what makes a backup, either Artemisian or Ico, into Steiner, into a different backup. Yeah, so very, very powerful. Very, very nice. Right now it's mono water, and I'd like to think that you will start drawing phoenixes that will look really bad in your hand. I, know, I don't I, know. I don't actually think phoenix is too strong against this deck outside of bringing, bringing back a really big VV, because you don't want to waste removal on something this small. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, honestly, I'm looking at these numbers, I'm like, oh, even a VV feels bad. Because like a VV deals seven thousand to a three K, and then VV's <laughs> no, no, the remainder does not trample over. VV's a two K. He can't even do anything about this himself. Like it just feels a little bad. Um, pass there. Okay, not wanting to go into the the part where we start tapping dudes down. Four in hand, and you're completely tapped out, so you couldn't cast a 7 CP Phoenix even if you wanted to. That's probably good. Unless you kill my bottom first, Steve. Oh, these plays. These plays. I think we'll do Leviathan into Yuna. Yeah, what does this one actually do? I hear it's good, but I haven't actually heard it. <laughs> So it's kind oh, of no, it, I have it, this. It's one of these sort of a zombie forwards. Uh, for every three summons in your break zone, you can pay one CP and revive her to, or bring her back to your hand from the break zone. But also, the really important ability is once per turn, not just during your turn, but also during your opponent's turn, you can check the top card of the deck, and if it's a summon, cast it right away. But there's an even more interesting combo with the backup that I just cannot seem to draw this game. Uh, Gladiator. Gladiator dulls to reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a backup, draw it. Oh. But that that's kind of risky. Like I, I think that you're, you're not really losing anything by milling a card. And theoretically, for every good card in your deck, you should have another couple of copies. So, like theoretically, it's if you've got no better use of your CP at the end of your opponent's turn, you can sink it into maybe drawing a card. You know, removes the maybe. Mm -hmm. If there's a backup, you just draw it, yeah. and uh, it, it it has been worth its weight in gold over the course of the past few games. Hmm. I think I need to do this crazy big thing. I don't think you do. <laughs> you would say that. Uh, right, let's do two for Vilfer. For 3,000 to your board, and if I control the unit upon resolution, you untap, right? I activate all backups. Yeah. So 3k, so it's killing my quorum. That's okay. Quorum effect? Sure. Bamford, certainly something. 
I'm going to discard a Moogle and a Porum and two for Fina. And do 5,000 damage to your board. Ooh. Okay. It's kind of the Exodia that Waterwind was granted, maybe, unduly, uh, in Opus 8. And I think that previously they said you kind of win the game if you have three Veilfor at once, or if you can cast three Veilfor in a single turn. And so there was a sort of a control deck being built all the way from Opus 2 right up to Opus 7, where it became easier and easier to cast maybe three Veilfors in a single turn, wipe yeah. your opponent's board during their own turn. And then they printed Fina, who is just ridiculous for, uh, for making it significantly easier to do just that. I'll go to combat and I'll attack with the one that I most want to die. And then the next most. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you've, you've kind of got open season. Here. Uh, five, six thousand. Six thousand. Oh, does it count itself? <laughs> it does count itself. It is in damage as the EX burst resolves. Oh, you could okay. prevent a point of damage by killing Zidane, but in all likelihood, Yuna. Well, Yuna is kind of a better card, but Yuna will definitely just come back from the break zone if you do. Yeah, how many. Um, is your hand empty? My hand is completely empty. I went all in on that because I wanted to start doing damage. If you kill Zidane, it doesn't change the maths of me maybe being able to win next turn. Like I'll still I'll still have damage plus board equals seven, and uh, I play a lot of games trying to make that equal seven. This is a really tough one. Uh, I guess I guess the obvious part is yes, you're definitely going to activate it. The question is, oh, of course I'm not. It's, it's, it's definitely activated. Sure. Fina's out of the question unless you have cheap ping, but I don't think anything seems like a good idea to play while you are completely tapped out. Yuna. Get rid of the Yuna. Okay. Oh, hang on. Sorry, actually. Her second effect. Is uh, that only on your turn? Only on my turn. Only during main phase. Yep. Yeah, okay. Go. Bye. Get gone. Right. Okay. Uh, I, don't want, I don't want you to look I'm at two cards in between the span. Definitely going to bring her back. Uh, I think we can remove a Leviathan from the game. I think we can remove one Diabolos from the game. Uh, I kind of want to leave one there just in case I get a, a fortunate pour room or something. And. Oh, how good would Poopoo be right now? Uh, never remove a Veil for that. That, that, is, uh, that is true. And I'll pass just there. I think that any time you can add a card to hand is very strong, and being able to repeatedly bring back Yuna, regardless of how she got into your break zone, to then discard two Moogles and Poopoos is very strong. Yeah, I'd agree. Mo Moogle and Poopoo don't really see play because decks are typically consistent enough that they don't need the filtering of what they do. But I think that uh, when you just remove the discard one from Poopoo or uh, Poopoo, Poopoo, wow, ah. that can be this deck title. Mog for the draw. Mog for the draw. Sure. Reasonably. <clears throat> So all three Steiners are gone. You're not going to like vomit a board of Steiner Zidane straight from deck onto the field. Sorry, it's okay. Zidane nonetheless. Sure. Uh, yeah, wow. It's a, it's a net gain of some cool CP. As opposed to discarding the Yuna that I could maybe just bring back again. I'm a big believer in taking away your opponent's last card, but sometimes those rules change. Yeah. Sure. Viking 2. Man, this deck just builds so quickly. That it does. Five in hand? Five currently in hand, yes. Okay. So it's a case of how much more security do you think you want? Or like, obviously, Fina can just attack into anything you have. But taking your fourth damage is nowhere near as bad as taking your sixth or your seventh. And currently, everything else is too small to get around to team. It's a case of how much do you believe that is absolutely the case? Are you rushing me, Steve? <laughs> no, no, no! I'm, I, I just—I've uh, been ranting all day. It's been a—it's been a, a good day for oh, rants, okay. and uh, my throat was getting a little bit dead. Yeah, I ended up talking an awful lot today. It's a, it's a problem through the whole of Scotland. Come and visit us. We'll talk to you yourself. Oh, easily. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> 
Four of Vivi. Uh, one. It's only seven. It's only, it's only six. Six characters. It's cool. Only six. Seven thousand damage on Fina. Cool. Why does this seem like Freya? Oh, Cloud of Darkness. Finish all right. Yeah, yeah that was a worryingly big build up. And I guess we have to pass. I think that you being so ahead on backups is probably going to work out massively in your favour. We can only hope. Oh, sorry. Uh, right, what do we have here? Combat, attack on pain. I'll throw the Viking under that. Oh, okay. Let's do two for the Yuna that was there previously. I've built oh, the wrong yeah. two backups, but I'm going to stick to it. Yeah. Uh, you know what's on top. That's mostly fine. I'll pass there. Oh, dare ye attack, scoundrel? How do I force you to draw, discard, oh, yeah. mill somehow? Well, that's the thing. Yeah, like with with Riku gone out of the format, the the couple of honourable uses for Riku, like uh, in Fasoya decks after they go Ephemeral Summoner, stack any expert on top, go to activate their Fasoya. Riku would sometimes go Mill, lose the summon off the top. You'll take a blind card instead, which is usually not a, another fanfrit. So uh, yeah, R Riku was kind of cool as a sort of a hedge piece against that deck, and also Mill was often easier to do to a, a good aggro Fasoya deck than seven damage. <clears throat> yeah, I think that the <laughs> the brand issue of an EX on the top of the deck of Yuna is almost as good as a summon I could cast. I was a little bit concerned that I, I should have dulled the Echo and the Riku for Yuna just in case there was a Moogle or Poopoo on the top. Uh, oh, that, that would have been a, a little bit easier to refresh my hand. And as much as Moogle and Poopoo give you a decent hand when cast from hand, when you cast them from a zone out of hand, outside of your hand, uh, it translates into more card advantage because you didn't actually take up a spot in your hand to be casting it. If that makes any kind of sense. Hmm. You play a shrewd game, Mr. <laughs> Mr. I play a lot of EXs. I, I wish I could call it anything close to shrewd. I think there's maybe 26 EXs in this list. Which again is, is a completely ridiculous distribution towards our, uh, Water Wind. Like, so many good EXs are there, uh, and, and I feel like they were trying for a while to push Earth as being like the damage identity with a lot of uh, very decent and card advantage -y EXs, but there's simply more in Water Wind that already had enough card advantage of its own. Attack with Cloud 3000 reduction. 3000 reduction. You've got your choice of any of these. It will target the Zidane, please. I died before combat damage, <laughs> and I'm definitely going to take that. The question is, how badly do I want Pilfer versus Diabolus? It's a case of what am I going to draw into a combo piece for sooner? I think it's poo poo. Because <laughs> uh, then, uh, then you can draw another Diabolus uh, and the combo piece. I'll, I would be very doubtful of that <laughs> since there's only two Diabolus in the deck. I felt kind of bad at having to throw one away on turn one, and the fact that I knew I could get it back feels reasonable. Attack for seven. During your turn, now, I'm going to check the top of this as well. Bail for. Ooh, how badly do I want that? That cheeky semi board wipe. That can go to damage and kill BB. Hmm, think. Couldn't respond to it anyway. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Stackless and castless. You also oh, yeah. your your creons and such won't trigger to them either. Not okay, is it? Not okay. That's what my chemical romance would say. Garnet, yeah. Prevent a few more things like that. Yeah, look at me playing things in the right order. Watch me go. <laughs> On you go. At the end of your turn, I'll do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for Diabolus to reduce Sedain to 1,000 so he dies to the effects of Ilfer and also break Cloud of Darkness. 
<laughs> oh, it just gets to break. Uh, it's set to 1,000 power. But because there was already 3,000 damage on him from the Velfer, uh, he Oh, no, I meant for a break for a class. Oh, yeah, clean, break, break, clean break on a 5 cost or above. Oh, sure. Clean break. Not uh, deal damage equal to power or anything of the sort. Because there's two targets here, unless they both invalidated, uh, the, the other effect will still go ahead. If I'd chosen something that didn't target, like activate my backups and break Cloud of Darkness, you could negate the entire summon by scholaring the Cloud of Darkness back to hand. But here, um, maybe uh, you have to ask the question of how much is worth doing to negate some of this. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've never heard of that already. I literally just, just drew triple backups here. What? Oh, that was three left. My first response is going to be this one. Yep, crack scholar targeting today. No further response from me. Cards in hand? One. You've not seen it. That's fine. I, I don't need to. Yeah, it's one next to the new way. Okay, I'm chill. I'm chill. Okay. okay, so they better hand. Uh, does the rest resolve? Yes. Sweet. Anything else in second main phase? Oh, yeah, this was all a matter, wasn't it? Indeed, it was, yeah. It's the wonder of Vale for giving me backups back during your turn. Funny girl. You wouldn't be able to do Cool. I'll go to combat and attack with pain. Put the garment in front of it. Hmm. Sure. And attack on Yuna. Yeah, okay. I feel slightly glad that you're not drawing more of them, but I guess there's still the case of you not having a fire backup. Are you in the mood to trade Layla for Garnet? Yes. Okay. Second main for me, Bell 3 for Pain. Two abilities go in the stack. I do control a Riku, so I'll activate three backups, and I do control a Yuna, so I'll draw a card. You can respond to these if you like. If, for instance, I did not control the Yuna at the time of the, that ability resolving, then. Uh, Oh, it does work, by the way. If you, oh, wait, hold on a second. Uh, if you control a card named Riku... No, I draw either way. I draw either way, but the Riku is dependent. Yeah, it's the way that the abilities are gated behind where you see the F, basically. When Pain enters the field, if you control Yuna, you draw a card. But the F is after choosing targets for the Riku part, meaning that that could invalidate. That is conditional. That, okay. is, that is checked on entry and on resolution. Just one of many, many reasons that card is stupidly strong. And I'd have to remove the Riku to interrupt You would have to remove the Riku, which I don't believe uh, there are tools in the arsenal of. Not those that can be played during opponent's turns. I believe you're correct. <laughs> uh, potentially you could do something like 8 cost Sephiroth, but yeah, I don't see that playing out at instant speed. Okay, uh, that's pretty interesting. You know, what's on top of the deck? It's your brother. I would definitely not like to draw that. So I'm going to play a brother. Oh, and get a shuffle. There's a little bit of kind of uh, Sensei's divining top fun about this. I'm going to search out another pain. It feels good to know that the first pain is fully disposable and that you're, you're ready to just spring back in action. And it feels good to know that I've got two resurrects on that unit already sitting in my graveyard, just in case. There is a little bit of anti-synergy with Porum, but... Not enough that it makes playing either of the cards. Oh, bad. of course not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
I'm just gonna pass there. I'd wanted that pain dead for quite a while. Ever since I had YRP United, uh, I'd kind of wanted to get rid of the small pain, but you just didn't want to spend removal on it, did you? 2,000 to board. Um, was that at the end of my turn? Yes. Yes. Sweet. Okay. Two costs. Yeah, Garnet maybe isn't too hot just now. As much as it does really do a number against Vilfer, two of them have gone. I say two, so that could be like two out of seven in this deck. GG, looks good. Cards in hand? Three, and you know one of them is a pain. Okay. Uh, Vivo will target pin. Off I go. I'll still just pass there. Still just pass. Yeah, flashing in Vivi for that extra damage during your opponent's turn is very, very strong. Looks good. Oh, uh, actually, hang on, that's. <laughs> oh, you don't, it only costs two anyway. Ooh. Extra relic. Oh, hang, oh. hang on a minute. Zidane is a big brained card. I'll pretend I didn't see that. You, you can do it at home. It is, it is coming out, I'm just trying to think now. I've been thinking for a while I'd do a deck tech talk on this fire water list. I'm going to draw a card. By all means. It is so versatile. Zidane is so versatile. Damn. No! We did it. No, I'm just saying that this deck alone. Oh, I guess there's only one in it. Discard the VV. Black Bolt. Target unit for 6k. Okay, in response, what's on top? An Astrologian. She's dead. And then we'll VV. That sucks. Uh, Astrologian really makes this deck feel like it's uh, an altogether different force because it just, it just means that you, you will hit your backup so consistently, but also. Almost every time Yuna does something, you will get value yeah, out of yeah. it. If you reveal a forward, draw it off of a Viking or a Pain or a Moogle or a Poopoo. If you reveal a summon, you can cast it. If you reveal a backup, you draw it. Just don't play monsters. Yeah. Who needs them? Who needs monsters? Uh, on you go. Right, let's see what I can do here. One. To bring back Yuna to my hand, what do I want rid of? I kind of want, want to keep those there. No. Um, I don't honestly think I'll need Leviathan against the deck that's still driven by on entry abilities. I don't need the second Poo Poo. I think that Moogle is stronger than Poo Poo against this because I'm not too likely to empty my hand. So with three gone, Yuna's back to my hand. We'll then do two for Yuna. Such a good card. And then we'll do three. For the pain you knew was there. Some autos trigger? Yep. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Now, what do I want to do? I'm not really in too much of a danger of milling, but I would very much like to win sometime. Let's do three for a Viking. And I think we'll cap it off by doing Gladiator for Astrologian. And that's a pass for me. Going from 0 to 3 forwards multiple times in the game, like Viking, Viking as a zombie because of Gladiator and Layla, Yuna's just a zombie in general. I, I absolutely love this deck. Do I think it's the best YRP out there? No. Uh, I think that there's maybe some consistency issues, but I think it's a strong alternative to, to the sort of almost mono wind taking the backup Yuna. Great, my favourite. Indeed. It's <laughs> so hard to know, like, when is it right to attack? Yeah, when, when do we get aggressive? Four, five, cloud for a big stabilizing 7k. 7k targeting the pain, please. The pain, okay, on the stack, uh, you know what's on top. We cast well, Poopoo on the stack. That's an EX burst. That's really that can stay there, that can stay there good. and pain can die. That's a pretty good card to see. Yeah. Uh, so I will go to cards in hand. Two. Two. You go up to four. But I would have to discard. Yeah. Oh. And and you do the discard first. Yeah. So it's it's not 
Like, when your hand isn't empty, uh, unless you've got a very clear choice, like there's a spare unit in there, I think that for the most part, Poo is weaker than Moogle. Draw, draw first. But yeah, Poo does crazy things if it's the last card in your hand as you cast it. Makes it very good against ice. I think that of all the YRP variants, this one stabilizes the best against ice. Where's Van? One Van in there. You want to play that? Yeah. Oh, I guess. 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 Oh, and yeah, that's like the one forward that I think is just about expensive enough that I would be happy returning it to hand. Uh, you know what's on top? A gladiator. Am I just going to deck myself out and not be able to win because I've been dirtling for so long? You've got nothing in hand? Yeah, nothing. Why not? Let's draw it. That makes a lot of things here kind of worse. <laughs> Moogle, I need help. Ooh. Oh, actually, hang on. Steve, what are you doing? There's, there's really not that much here. Steve. Stop, stop drawing. Stop drawing cards. I will go to less cards than you when I inevitably close. That makes me want to attack. Lots and lots. It's fine, I'll win the turn of clouds. Don't worry about it, buddy. Stain, Gladiator, and some. Pina for 5,000 to your board. Ooh. And the question is, no, that's all right. Yeah, uh, okay. I'm, I'm happy leaving it at that. I was debating paying the the three wind kicker cost to to do both things, but no, nah, I think I, I think I can live without that. Sounds good. I'll go to combat and attack with you now. How many poor rooms am I doing? The question of do you trade? Mm. Very tough. That's a huge thing. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. So if Cloud came back, you would have that turn and only that turn to win, which currently you can't. Indeed. <laughs> It's the case of, uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, there we go. That's what I like to see. Uh, I think Layla is approaching a liability. Let's sedain whatever that card is you drew off the Viking. Okay, yeah, well, it stops you. It stops nothing. It stops nothing. Basically, it stops nothing. I'll just pass there. It's too hard to pressure, but it stops you having any kind of a. I guess a really good Phoenix into Vivi could maybe have pushed for a game uh, on your previous. Uh, like, if I'd left the board the way it was on the previous turn, so. Really needed to Fina at another time. Two for four on. That's problematic. That's going to drag the game out nicely. 
I really need to draw a poor arm right now. Is that oh poor arm? Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah get back a Mugo. I, or, uh, I think it will be too hard for me to win unless I can get a poor arm now, so that it loses summon sickness on the next turn, so that I can get back probably Diabolus to get through Cloud. I think that things would start to fall into place if that happened, but I don't know. I think I had to throw away too much stuff too early on. Okay. Well, that helps you more than me. Indeed. You would now lose if you brought block on cloud. Because you've had a turn. I'll go to combat and attack on Fina. Put the four arm under it. Sure. Is that good? Yep, yep. All good. Adds uh, four cost Phoenix. Yep, because it's castable right now, and we'll bring back a BB to do terrible things to me. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six. VV would be the seventh. We've got two in hand, meaning Zidane is of reasonable size. Let's attack here too. No, Morrowind's a better matchup. I think it's like 45. Yeah, neither of these are similar. Morrowind's much faster, much more potent than Morrowind will ever be. But Morrowind's more consistent. That's that battle. How useful is Archer? Archer? Um, it will depend on whether you're winning early game or not. Because everyone does match. Yeah, yeah. That's my exact issue. And I think, like, Van is meant to be, like, mad at all. <laughs> oh, this is a tough one. Maths time. It is maths time. Right. Oh, of course, there's one left. We hit it and we die. Okay. Three cards in hand. Three in hand, and I don't believe you've seen any. I agree. I'm gonna take it. Okay. Sounds good to me. You know what's on top. Go on. Do it. Do it, Steve. If I draw that, then that happens. Mm. Three because it's not an EX burst, and if I'm going to take one more damage, <laughs> I would like that damage to be an EX burst, and I know what two of the remaining three cards are off the top of my head, and they have an EX written in the corner. Ooh. I have a funny feeling the third one might be as well. I have a feeling there's at least one Valfor left. There's a, there is a Valfor, and there's there's a, Valfor? The, there is a Porum. There's, uh, there's not two Valfors. One's in damage already. Oh, sure. Wait, that's illegal. That would be another backup. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I think I'm just going to have to... If I felt really, really brave, I could Astrologian to mill the pain. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I think I'll just pass there. It's a case of if you Phoenix just now, Viking dies, I draw the pain, and my turn continues. We Phoenix. We Phoenix. 
Sure. Who would you like to target? Yeah. For me, it's like, if anything, it's like, I could target that. Uh, the Lord of the Creek and then generally, because they've been attacking that. I miss Riku Mills so much. Just a big thing. Yeah, I just like, I'm keen on all of that. 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 I'm
And I've not seen a 7 CV Phoenix yet, so there's probably one in those two cards. But yeah, uh, for convenience, your other two summons are now on top of the break zone. Oh. And hint, it won't be fan for me. <laughs> there was a line in my head where I'm like, right, we fan for our own clouds, resolve clouds effect. Uh, and it's like, oh, yeah, we were. Yeah. Oh. If, if only, if only. Okay. If I attack, you hit Veil for off the top. The trouble is, if I take damage, I lose the milk because I would have to draw an non-existent card. Yeah. I cannot take yeah. damage this turn. That is absolutely. That is, a, that is an absolute. Yeah, you cannot take damage. This is where like Kuchelin to turn off Forum's abilities would be nuts. I see, yeah, why, I, I see why people are playing it as a, a couple of... I cannot afford to take damage. That, that I need to keep drilling into my head. And I'm so glad that that forum didn't draw a card. Phoenix. The even more kind. Okay. It's got a target BB. I think that's the only correct play here. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't even think Veilfor is the correct thing for me to get here, so I don't see the point in you getting Garnet. I think that I'm, I'm much more likely to get Diabolos for how much of a multi for one that turns out to be. Um, so, sorry, first Phoenix effect? Uh, 2k ping across my entire field. Forum dies, I'll target Diabolos. Yes. VV will target pain. DV targets pain. And pain dies. Yep. That pain has been incredibly useful. Each pain has been very useful. For the amount of removal, it just soaks in. I can't even use Yuna to cast off the top now, because if I do, I'll deck out. It's, it's equivalent to adding draw one card to all of your summons that you happen to cast that way. Uh, and I'm just going to remind myself that there's 2,000 on each of these forwards. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I've been very impressed with this deck over the course of today. I think that this has actually been the roughest game for me getting back up, but you still get there just fine, and I've still gotten to get use out of Astrologian even though it was like my last backup to come down. <laughs> I think that any backup that just reads tap, draw a card has to be worth playing. Pass. Pass. Okay. Do I do anything with all of this wonderful CP? Draw a card. Uh, the <laughs> do it. No thanks. Uh, I think that if I did, I don't have a way of capitalizing on the reduction. So really, I just have to take the turn and try and push through everything here. Empty deck. Let's see what I can do. One in hand? Yep. Astrologian and three for Diabolus. Uh, break cloud, reduce the deck. 
to. Bill for to clear your board. Yeah. I don't think anyone got it here. Just got it here. Yeah, sure. That was exceedingly tense. I think you had a solution on the previous turn. Instead okay. of going for the Phoenix, if you'd mug to return my forum to hand. Because I was completely dependent on that Diabolus. Uh, yeah, of course. That's, that's why I was reading that. I was like, oh, of course. To, to find a path through, yeah. That, yeah, that was uh, tense stuff. I don't, uh, was the score 7 4? 7 4? I think all of my games today have been 7 4. Yeah. It's like this deck I was too distracted by the, the big birds in my hand. Big, big bird plays almost always seem like the correct move. Yeah. So, so there was one big bird. Did you draw that on the final turn? And then there's one more in the deck, yeah. yeah. Maybe maybe playing three of those is correct, just to see it more often. But yeah, I don't think it's actually spectacular against this deck. No, so you, sorry, you had Yuna, Pain, and Porum. Yuna, Pain, uh, Porum died, uh, Yuna, Pain's a yeah. So I Mog, Porum away. That leaves you with those two. So if I Mog, I'm using this, which leaves me with a hand of this. It meant that, see when he goes to play the Veil for and this dies, it gets you an extra card, so it meant that this was life. Ah, uh, okay. So you get rid of It's amazing the difference that one card can make. Right. So you yeah. actually don't need to do anything that's on the card. If anyone is interested yeah. in seeing the deck list for either of these decks, I have them both, and they're both free for use. They're very, very good, and I expect that they are both quite worthy of uh, carrying you through Swiss at maybe the Dark Cup. Until then, I look forward to seeing you, hopefully as many of you as possible at the Dark Cup. This has been Steve Dolman and Joshua Gardner. Thank you very much.